What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Go Pony. I review new cars on YouTube and today we are in the new 2020 Nissan Rogue courtesy of Hanover Nissan in Hanover, Pennsylvania. And so I am always excited to hop inside Nissans having owned one previously in my short lifetime here on earth. I have previously owned a Nissan Skyline 350 GT, otherwise known as the Infiniti G35 to us here in the US. And so I'm very partial to them actually. I kept that one for quite a while. So I am in the new Nissan Rogue today, 2020 model year, because it is above average reliability according to consumer reports it's also got tons of standard safety features which of course I will be going over in the video so what do you say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing let's say there will be a few different trim levels for the 2020 Nissan Rogue first one being the S starting at $25,300 then you have the SV for $26,720 and lastly the SL which is the one we are in today starting at $31,690 and so that pricing was for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all-wheel drive to any of those trim levels, simply add $1,350 to any of those prices. And so regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the road will be the same. There is no hybrid configuration for 2020. I wanted to first start by mentioning that. That is one of the new changes, I guess you could say, for the 2020 model year. Powering this little beast is going to be a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four-cylinder, putting out 170 horsepower available at 6,000 RPM. RPM, 175 pound-feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT or continuously variable transmission, and that 0 to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 8.8 .8 seconds, so we are going to test out the acceleration in a little bit here, but before we do that, MPG numbers come in at 26 in the city, 33 highway for the front wheel drive, 25 in the city, 32 on the highway for the all wheel drive setup, and so before we do that acceleration, I did want to mention that there are some driving modes actually available on the Nissan Rogue as well. And those driving modes are going to be Eco and Sport. And so they're a little different location than you would find in most other manufacturers out there. Those driving modes are located just by the driver's left knee. And so essentially though, what they are going to do is adjust things like the throttle response, shift points, and steering sensitivity as well. And so I did just put it in that Sport driving mode. And I will say, even with it in sport driving mode, the steering sensitivity is probably the first thing I noticed on the Rogue. It is a little bit on the loosey goosier side. So without it in that sport driving mode, it's even looser, but still we will say comparatively speaking to a lot of the other SUVs that I've driven, this uh, steering feel is a little bit on the looser side. But having said that, I love the steering wheel grips. They're a little bit on the thicker side, so it gives me a better feeling of control. So that, my friends, is a definite plus. But having said that, gotten all the specs out of the way now, let's do a quick little acceleration here. Let me find a straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Nissan Rogue here up to speed. All right, you guys, and there we go. It's not bad. It definitely is going to be enough to merge you onto the highway, but having said that, 0 to 60 in 8.8 .8 seconds, of course, is not the quickest acceleration out there, especially when you compare it to some of its competitors, but it isn't bad. It's certainly going to get the job done. And again, it is a naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, so it is pretty much as expected. I do like that it's an NA engine, too. That means that's going to benefit you, of course, when it comes to reliability. And Consumer Reports backs that up as well, of course, giving it that above average reliability rating. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.7 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.5 inch ventilated rear discs. And before we get to the stop sign up here, let's hit the brakes. There goes my bag. Not bad, certainly no issues of brake pedal delay or anything like that. Excellent braking feel. Well done, Nissan, for that. But so they're touching on suspension and handling a little bit. Up front, you're going to get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as the ride quality goes, it's been great so far my short test drive today. Certainly no issues with uh, the Rogue not soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections nicely. So ride quality is definitely on point. Touching on steering feel again, because I'm in that segment, it is uh, definitely on the looser side. It really depends on what you 
like there. It's definitely probably something that you're gonna get used to, so it shouldn't be any issues there. Touching on cabin noise, perhaps the only thing I could say on cabin noise is it really does absorb the exterior wind noises quite nicely, but I will say when you hit the gas, you get a good bit of engine noise coming into the cabin, but other than that, cabin noise is just fine. So when you're not hitting the gas and you're just cruising along the road or whatever, wind noise is definitely kept at bay quite nicely there. So touching on visibility a little bit, this is where the Rogue really shines. Rear visibility is absolutely 100% on point, partly due by the exterior design of the Rogue. It is a little more less swoopy in the back, I guess you could say. So for that reason, visibility is absolutely excellent, probably among the best in its class so that is that is definitely on point but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this beautiful blue 2020 nissan rogue all right you guys so here she is the 2020 nissan rogue finished in caspian blue metallic love this color gotta be honest but anyways let's go ahead and start up front halogen headlights are going to come standard actually for all trim levels across the board led headlights are actually going to be an option for the sl it's going to come with the premium package which goes for 1820 dollars so if you did want leds you can get it with the sl as an option if you wanted it and by the way that package does add a panoramic moonroof as well if you wanted to go that route all trim levels however will give you led daytime running lights always nice and fog lights will come standard for the SL trim level. And that, of course, is the lighting found just below, located in that front bumper there. Then make your way to the side, taking a look up top there. Silver roof rails coming standard with the SV and SL trim levels. Chrome window surrounds coming standard across the board. Rear privacy glass coming with the SV and SL, along with chrome door handles to go with that. Taking a look at those side mirrors, there are body colored power adjustable side mirrors that will come standard. And if you go with the SV or SL trims, you will find LED integrated turn signals and those side mirrors will be heated with those two trims as well. And take a look down at the wheel setup. 17 inch steel wheels with covers is gonna come with the S trim level, 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels for the SV and 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels for the SL trim level that you are currently looking at right now. So then make your way to the back on this one, shark fin antenna up top there, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, rear window wiper just below that, LED tail lights this is where rogue definitely gets it right led tail lights standard across the board and they look like they are smoked housings as well giving a more aggressive appearance back there definitely looks good in my opinion of course you have some trim level badging found on the bottom portion of that rear tailgate and just below all of that a single exhaust outlet across the board so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip <laughs> you guys so now that we are around back of the rogue there are a few different ways to open that rear cargo lift gate there there is a button on the key fob that is one way there is also a button by the driver's side left knee that is yet another way and there is a button that you can actually press back there that is yet even another way to go about opening that rear lift gate but there is a motion activated lift gate if you were to go at the sv or sl trim levels so that is, of course, is uh, probably the easier way if you have your hands full. But nonetheless, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 39.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 70 cubic feet even. That's actually a good bit for its segment. So well done, Nissan, there. You will find four cargo tie-down hooks back there. There is some in-floor storage as well. That's definitely always a plus. And a 12-volt power outlet can be found in that cargo area as well. Then make our way to the rear seats. Rear legroom comes in at 37.9 inches. So for reference, I'm mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Plenty of space for me. Can find rear ventilation for all trim levels across the board for those rear passengers as well. Can also find a USB charging port and a phone charging port for those rear passengers too. So they can stay connected. That's always a plus. Make our way to the front seats. Cloth seating is going to come with the S and SV trim 
trim levels. If you were to go with the SL that we have today, you will find full leather seating. That is currently, of course, what you're looking at right now. Heated front seats are gonna come with the SV and SL. Manually adjustable seats with the S. However, you will get an eight-way power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar for the SV and SL trim levels. You will get a four-way power passenger seat with the SL, including memory settings actually as well for up to two different drivers found just to the left, I guess, on the driver's side door essentially. So two different driver memory settings, that's definitely a plus. Taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SV and SL trim levels and it will come heated for the SL for this super cold days in Pennsylvania like today. Then when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You have all of your buttons essentially located on one side of the key with that little Nissan logo, but lock, unlock, but the pop the rear hatch, that circular button, that remote start button is what that is. That is gonna come standard with the SV and SL trim levels. So that is how you're gonna go ahead and get that. And there is a push button start for those two trims as well. So all I am going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauge display there. They make our way to overall interior quality. As I had previously mentioned, there is a dual panel panoramic moonroof that is optional actually for the SV and the SL trim levels. Dual zone climate control coming standard with the SV and SL. Home link controls coming standard with the SL that we have today. And they can be found on that rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors. Overhead sunglass holder is actually gonna come standard on all trim levels across the board. Also one of the quirky little features that I noticed on this one that I don't think I've ever seen in any other vehicles before. There is a little plastic clip attached to the driver's side sun visor. I would imagine this is for when you go on the Pennsylvania Turnpike and you have to grab those tickets you can slide it up there and then when it comes time to pay the toll you can simply just take it out rather than trying to put it on top of the sun visor and having it fall out midway through. So I definitely do absolutely love that. I like the look of the carbon fiber trim on the doors, although it's not real carbon fiber, it is plastic, but it looks good. Just in front of the shifter, you have a little storage area there, 12 volt power outlet, auxiliary port, USB charging port, and an electromechanical parking brake as well. Just behind the shifter, you have two cup holders as well as a little more storage and your heated seat buttons if you have a trim level equipped with those heated seats at least. Just behind that, when you open up the center armrest, you have another USB charging port, another 12 volt power outlet, a decent amount of space with some pen slash pencil holders at the top portion as well. So overall, a very functional interior, a very nice setup, a very nice layout to the Nissan and definitely something that I would have absolutely no problem living with. A very nice interior quality here. But so anyways, now let's go ahead and take a look at the tech display up front here. Seven inch color touchscreen display will come standard for all trim levels. It is slightly smaller than most other display screens out there, but still it gets the job done. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, even for the bottom trim level, that's definitely a plus. Therefore, meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Rogue and you have free navigation displayed up on that screen, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Brandora songs. And there's a couple other compatible apps as well factory navigation system if you wanted it, although you don't need it, comes with the SL trim level that we have today. And of course, you can check out your radio settings up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will get four speakers with the S trim level, six speakers with the SV, and a nine speaker Bose sound system with a subwoofer if you were to go with the SL. So, do you think you guys know what we have to do next? Since we have the Bose sound system here, let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Quite honestly, absolutely amazing sound system. I love the Bose sound system in the Rogue. It works very well with the vehicle. I can't say that with all vehicles out there, but the Bose sound system definitely kills it in the Rogue. Absolutely 100% recommend that sound system. I've had it in my Infiniti G35 before. It never broke on me. It's perfect. It was always crystal clear as it is here in the Rogue. So 100% recommend that sound system for the Rogue. Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Rogue in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board. In addition to that, if you were to go with the SL that we have today, you will additionally find a 360 degree monitor or a bird's eye view of all your surroundings, left, right, back, front, everywhere. So you could either better perfectly park the Rogue or you just make sure you don't run anything over. So 
that, as always, is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention when it comes to the safety of the Nissan Rogue, it is an IIHS top safety pick if you were to go with the LED headlights. That is how you got that safety rating by IIHS. And again, that's an optional package if you wanted it. Front side side curtain airbags will come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard back there, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. But here's where it really gets good. Also standard across the board, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane keep assist, blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. Just reviewed the new Toyota Highlander 2020. Blind spot monitoring system did not come standard on the base trim level of that one, but it does here on the road. That's awesome. High beam assist, also standard. Hill start assist, also standard. SV and SL trims are going to add rear parking sensors, rear automatic braking. And the SL trim level is going to add in addition to that, again, the 360 degree monitor as well as adaptive cruise control. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're not if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold